Hello and welcome to the Startups Roundtable. I'm your host, Tony Hackett, and today I'm speaking with Unicreate co-founder and CTO, Kieran Kumar, and he gave me valuable insights into innovation, decision-making, and collaboration. Unicreate is an AI-driven data company, and we have plenty to talk about. So let's meet Kieran. Kieran, could I ask you then to get us underway, maybe give us a little bit of your background and what you're up to right now with Unicreate? Thanks, Tony. So my name is Kiran. I'm CTO and co-founder at Unicreate. I've been coding for the better part of my life. I've uh, worked on multiple technologies, domains, products for over two decades. On a more personal level, I'm into martial arts, health and fitness. All of this, you know, I feel brings a lot of balance to everything that I do. And even with my company, you know, the idea of Unicreate was also to bring a lot of balance to some of the challenges that businesses are facing today. So primarily, it's a challenge of dealing with overwhelming information that's locked up in unstructured documents. The biggest pain is the uncertainty of the right approach to use. For example, if you're trying to extract shareholders' information from company annual reports, you can go about it in two ways. Either employ hundreds of people to manually extract it, or you can get a technical team to use automation tools or products that are pre-trained for the particular use case. But when the documents tend to have rich diversity in structure and layout, both these options become unmanageable. This is where our product allows businesses to balance out the overheads by continuously optimizing the process. Simple UI UX, smart workflows, short learning curves, and assisted learning features help speed up the work and also to test new ideas more efficiently. The system manages the complexity of machine learning and AI under the hood, and users do not need any technical knowledge to use it. In short, it's a smart extraction automation tool. It's a powerful tool too, Kieran. I've had the great fortune to see the the work that you do and the team do. And I want to come to that, but I want to take you back a little bit first. Can you go back to starting Unicreate and how you and your co-founders came together? And what did those early days feel like, those first steps? I was in the uh, development world for a long time, worked on multiple products during my early years. I built everything from a trading platform for the National Stock Exchange of India to transport systems automation to occupational health and safety systems in South Africa. But a lot of these product requirements were given by the companies that I worked for. And somewhere deep down, I had this feeling that there could be more to designing the products that I built. So I started having this vision of eventually building a product that helps the users so seamlessly that they don't even notice that a system is involved. Essentially like an invisible assistant who takes care of your needs. But I had no idea what this product would look like until my co-founder Nitin approached me. He had this idea for a product that helps people make sense of information that's locked up in documents. I was just a vendor at the time, but we started working at it and somehow it started connecting with my original product vision. In time, it just naturally came to a point where we decided to start our new company to realize it. And uh, now our product is slowly getting closer and closer to that vision. And what did it feel like at the start? So this is your first startup? Yes. That must have been a big step. This was my first startup for product development. I had worked in other areas before. I've been in startups that were in the healthcare segment, in the performance segment, nanotechnology and all that. But this was very different because this was something which I was personally invested in. So it really drove me to see what we can do, you know, push the limits. And I think that's what actually brought in the three of us co-founders together. Even Rakesh, our third co-founder, he's somebody that I've known for a couple of decades now. And he was also driven by this whole vision of something that we could build ourselves, you know, use all of our energy and creativity to do it. And when we looked at this idea originally, it was very different, by the way, from what we have today. But that whole uncertainty somehow fueled us about what we could do. And when we started off, we were finding our feet. It was quite the journey, you know, figuring ourselves out how to work together. You know, we all come from very different backgrounds, the three of us, and learning to work together and, you know, putting all our ideas together in a sort of synchronous manner and build something out of it. That was, I think, the biggest uh, challenge for us. That would have been quite the challenge, I would imagine, especially given that 
you knew each other a little, it would sometimes be easier to drive to a, a true corporate decision-making process if you didn't know each other. How you were able to balance that being friends and having to make decisions that were going to guide your future? Initially, we went through the whole decision-making process with our own thought process. A lot of decisions we made was mostly, you know, coming from our past experiences, but we weren't looking forward. But at some point, we fortunately found these amazing mentors who brought out the story that we were all writing for ourselves. Each of us had a story that we were writing for our own futures. And then we kind of looked at how it all comes together. Decisions became easier after that. Once we knew what is it that we are charting out for ourselves as a group, as a collective, I think the collective story is what made sense and our decisions became easier and easier. The first part of our journey was all individual decisions. Each one had a particular area that we would work in. So For example, I was only in the technology solution side of it. I wouldn't get involved in other sides as much. So we were more mindful of overstepping our boundaries. But now we are all involved in every bit of our journey. I think that's the biggest difference now. So we work as a collective. That's a very good explanation of of how you've, you've brought yourselves together. It must still be very challenging to build out that vision, especially in the time that we're working through now. And over the last 12 months, it's been difficult for everybody on every level. How have you tackled that as a young company building out a vision? That's true. I think the pandemic really put us into a different world. Whatever we had built out, whatever we had planned out, everything just changed so suddenly. And one of the first things that we realized is our focus has to shift to the team and not so much to the world out because there was a lot of uncertainty outside and first thing we had to manage was our team and their well-being so our first focus was how do we you know get into a way of working that keeps everybody comfortable so that was our first order of business and thankfully we were able to do that very quickly now our team is now working from their hometowns we are spread across at least eight or nine locations around India and one outside India. So that was the first thing. And then, of course, the challenges on the business side also had to be dealt with differently. And one thing that happened during the pandemic was it actually worked in our favor. Because we are an automation company, a lot of clients now had a lot more drive to automate their processes and they started coming back to us. So it was no longer as uh, about us trying to find these clients. It was more about us saying, okay, now we have X number of clients. How do we make sure that we deliver to them everything that they're looking at? And how do we use our time to engage with them at a deeper level? That is an incredible element of your story. Because what you said a few moments ago too, is that the problem you're solving, no one else was defining. So the three of you had worked out what the problem was and were attacking it. And now you meet a time when organizations, almost a light bulb moment for them, I'm guessing. And are you seeing that the customers are now starting to provide more guidance as to what your roadmap will be? Absolutely. We've had a lot more engagement with our clients. The most recent engagement we had with a client involved almost 30 people from the client side giving us information and working with us. So I think we have effectively moved from us doing something and handing it to a client to a stage where now the client is saying, let's work together at it and get it done together. So that's the big shift that I think this whole pandemic has brought about that we all realize now working together is the most beneficial way to get something done. And that time together that we are getting with our clients has given us a whole new idea of how deep the product can go into the client's business. It's interesting, Karen. I was reading a, a book a little while ago now, and I think it might have been written maybe 15 years ago. It's called The Second Machine Age. And one of the messages in it is that the only asset an organization has is its business processes. And what you're describing and being able to fuel automation is such an important piece of the puzzle now because organizations are trying to work out how to drive efficiencies because growth isn't there because everything has changed over the last year. So how do they bring profitability and efficiency? It is out of automation and being able to extract that data from all of their unstructured data to deliver that business value. That is something that more and more organizations are going to chase. 
Absolutely. The biggest shift that's happened for organizations is realizing that your process has to essentially be data centric. You know, in our realm, it used to be a lot of people centric work that was going on. And because of the way the world has changed now, getting to the data centric part of the journey is a big challenge for a lot of clients. And that's where, you know, we see a lot of the older ways of doing things and the traditional approaches to these things are now being let go. And organizations are more open to innovation and they're more open to big change that can actually bring big results to their work, right? So the, now the focus is a lot on efficiency. How can we increase the efficiency of everything that we are doing 10x and be able to realize that in our you know, business goals and new markets that we are addressing? You've just led me into my next question by saying new markets. When we first met, and I know that you have deep heritage in the financial services marketplace, when you start to think about adjacent markets or growth areas, how are you thinking about the other industries? So when we started, we had actually identified a lot of different sectors that we wanted to address. But over time, we realized that when you focus on one thing, you're able to deliver much better. And that's when we zeroed in on the financial sector, right? Now, we have a different approach to see which markets are more in alignment with what our product is doing. So what happens is a lot of opportunities come through because of our clients and our networks. And I think clients tell us more than we can figure out about what works for them. And because our product is essentially domain agnostic, sometimes they'll look at it and they'll say, hey, you know, you could probably apply this product to this process in our industry. And then we will take it from there and explore along with them how far we can go. So that's kind of helped us expand outwards more organically rather than using our own thought processes and, you know, guessing it. We are letting the market drive us. Kieran, on a personal level, what has been something that has surprised you from taking that step into starting your own venture and to where you are now that maybe you thought it was going to be easier and it was harder or you thought it was going to be harder and maybe it was a little bit easier? Is there something that stands out in your mind? Yes. So when we started, we had a very different view of what we wanted to build. I think we had a lot of clarity and this this clarity was built on assumptions <laughs> that we hadn't tested, which is why we had a lot of clarity. And now we don't have a lot of clarity, but we have a vision and we know how our clients will benefit from the vision. So we have gone from being very product centric in our view of what we do to being very client centric. And that's made the biggest shift. You know, even when we had the clarity about the product, we weren't sure how it will eventually be used by a client. But now that and that was a fear at that time. But now there's a certainty that our client will tell us exactly how they want to use it. And we just have to support them with the best of whatever our product has to offer. So I think that's been the biggest shift. That's interesting indeed. There's a, a view as to bu businesses building out horizons and people use different terms, whether it's horizon one, two, and three, short, medium, long. When you sit down with Rakesh and with Nitin as your co-founders, how do you start to look at those, those horizons? What sort of time periods do you put on them? So typically we have a three-month horizon, a one-year horizon, and a five-year horizon that we look at. And we, we have realized over the years that there are subtle changes to whatever we set aside as these horizons. As the market evolves, as the world evolves, we have to come back to these, look at them again with fresh eyes because of our own experience and of because of the feedback we've got from clients. These will keep changing. It's very important to at least look at this every six months. So you know what's changed. You can incorporate those changes and you can define that new horizon for yourself. So Kieran, I'll come back to your role domain as the CTO. What excites you the most about technology or more the trends that you're seeing in the technology right now? Technology for me has always been a tool, you know, a tool that adds value to our lives in many different ways. For me, I don't see it as something that's, especially being in the AI and ML side of it, you hear a lot of stories about how AI could take over our lives and, you know, cause terrible things to happen. But for me, I feel it has to do with the people who are building the technologies. As long as we are looking to add value to our lives, technology is going to be the greatest tool that we have that will make everything easier and better for us. And now the way the technology is evolving, it's the cycles of progress 
are becoming shorter with larger impacts. And that's what excites me. You know, the steps that we can take in our own evolution is faster and faster. So when I look at new technologies, that's what I can see with, with AI and machine learning. The changes that we can make to our clients' ways of looking at things, we can get there much faster. I, th- I think you're absolutely right. And I know over the last few weeks in my role, we've been looking very closely at data quality and we're actually looking very closely at automation now to try and work out how that makes a difference to the business outcomes for our customers, but also for the if you like the quality of life of the employees being able to deliver their results. And so it is bringing that mapping in that that is the, I suppose, the greatest challenge, but the greatest opportunity for us. I wonder as we come to the, the close of our conversation today, if I could ask you to provide some commentary around coaches and mentors, that if there was a, a new founder or somebody thinking about building their own venture that was listening to this right now, what guidance would you give them about identifying and approaching mentors and coaches? One of the things that we have to realize is the why of whatever we are doing right? There's always a reason that drives us something that's beyond the money that you're going to make or what you're going to build. If you can find mentors who can bring out that story and help you align that with your goals, I think you can then take charge of the narrative. And then your whole team becomes a lot more effective because they know what's the story they're writing and they know how to add their own bits to that story to make it reach the ultimate outcome, right? So it's very important to find mentors who look beyond processes and outcomes to see where you're coming from, where you're starting from. You can only go to your destination from where you are today. So it's very important for them to see how you got to where you are today and how that can lead to where you want to be. So if you can find mentors and coaches who can bring that out for you, I feel that is a winning situation. That is wonderful advice and I think a a terrific place for us to pause our conversation for today. Kieran, thanks for taking the time. It's wonderful to hear a bit of your version of the behind the scenes story of Unicreate and I've always been excited for your future and I, I continue to be. But thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Tony. It was amazing. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. As always, feedback is appreciated. Thanks for listening and bye for now.